welcome to episode six of So You Want to Podcast, strategies for growing your business, community, and influence. I'm Danny Osmond, and today we're going to talk about how you can reduce your marketing and networking costs and actually make money off of your podcast. Uh, First, I want to thank all of the people that took the time to rate and review the podcast on iTunes and the other podcast apps that you might be using. Let me take a second to read one of the reviews that's come in so far. This is from Pete at PSB Creative. Excellent. I highly recommend Danny. He's a podcast expert. These episodes have great bite-sized tips that can guide any podcaster beginning through established. Thank you, Pete. And if you enjoy the show like Pete has, please go over to iTunes or the Apple Podcasts app or any app that you listen to podcasts on and rate and review the show. It's really helpful for getting the word out there to people that might discover the show through those apps. And if you leave a review, I might just read it on the show. So today, like I said, we're going to talk about how to reduce your marketing and networking costs and actually make some money off of your podcast. As I've mentioned over the last few episodes, podcasting really is a great marketing asset and an asset for building your connection to your clients, potential clients, listeners, enhancing that know, like, and trust factor with your customers. So let's talk about how it actually can save you some money in the realm of advertising and marketing. How how much money did you spend last year on advertising? Think about how much you spent on direct response, print, awareness campaigns, billboards, maybe bus benches. How much did you spend on Facebook ads? How much did you spend on pay-per-click? $5,000, $10,000, $20,000? I mean, I've seen crazy numbers for putting an ad on the side of a bus in larger cities like Washington, D.C., where I used to live. I know that several nonprofits that I worked for there easily spent $25,000 a year on print advertising. And I I mean, think about myself. I know last year I easily spent $5,000 on my own website, probably $1,000 or more on Facebook ads. And I probably spent another $10,000 or more on travel to conferences for networking purposes. My point in sharing all that is that podcasts can actually reduce those costs. That know, like, and trust factor that's being built in your listener is way more effective at converting them into clients than most forms of marketing and face-to-face networking with strangers at conferences and trade shows. Why? Because it's that intimacy thing. You're there in their ears, millimeters from their brain, in their earbuds, and you're connecting with them on a level in a personal space that they don't really let many other people into. And you don't have to travel. Think about that. I mean, you heard me talk about in my first episode that my why is my family. I want to be home with my family. I was probably on the road five days a month last year traveling. And a lot of that travel was to conferences and networking events to try and land new clients. And if there's a tool out there like a podcast where I can connect with a much larger network of people and still sit at home and do that, that's really powerful. Would it be worth it to you to have a tool that could get you off the road and keep you at home with your family and friends? I'm actively pursuing on a daily basis ways to use my podcast and ways to use live video and things like that to connect with potential clients without having to travel. So a tool like podcasting where I can connect with the listener and connect with lots of listeners at the same time is very valuable because it keeps me at home and it keeps me around the people that I love and want to be with. Okay, so now let's talk about monetizing your podcast. And I will have multiple shows about how to monetize your podcast and ways you can make money in the future, but let's talk about it in general terms today. You've probably heard people talking about monetizing your podcast in the past with sponsorships, ads, things like that. And while it's true that ad dollars are flooding the podcasters from things like video and TV advertising, the vast majority of ad dollars are actually going to major media outlets. You're actually much better off sponsoring yourself by making sure that everything your listener, who is hopefully your ideal client, everything they hear, see, touch, And feel in relationship to your podcast is actually leading them to becoming your client. So later on in this episode, after I finish speaking and you hear the little transition of music, it's going to go into a call to action. 
And that call to action is leading you to my lead magnet, my podcast launch formula. This is an example of me sponsoring myself because the intention is, is that I'm giving you a valuable tool, a plan for when you create your podcast, an effective way to launch it. I actually used this launch formula with the launch of my podcast here. And it led to a bunch of five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. It works. Now, the reason I'm giving you that effective plan for free is that I'm hoping it will build our connection and relationship. And that might lead you to do other things with me. It might lead you to hire me. It might lead you to bring me in to produce your podcast or something like that. And if you'll notice, if you go and download this, it's going to lead you to a thank you page where I explain my lead magnet. That's giving you extra value on top of that. And then after you finish that video on the thank you page, you have the chance to register for one of my webinars where I'm going to talk even more about how you can utilize podcasts to grow your business. So you see, this is a way of sponsoring yourself, letting people know what products and services you have available so that they can take advantage of them. So over the last few episodes, we talked about how a podcast is effective at growing your business community and influence. I've given you a bunch of reasons, the know, like, and trust factor, the expertise and authority that you create, the stats, the demographics, the strength as a marketing asset, the ability to reduce marketing and advertising costs and networking travel. But some of you may be thinking, well, a podcast is a lot of work. It's a lot of time, and and I'm not going to lie, it is a lot of time. It's a lot of preparation. I did want to take a second and address some of that fear you might have about the time it takes to work on a podcast. If you run a business, if you're a thought leader, if you're a coach, something like that, you probably already have a blog, a brochure, newsletters that you send out. Well, you can actually use most of your existing content on those sources to create podcast content. There's really no need to spend time reinventing the wheel. You just reuse and repurpose your existing content and save time. Now, the reason this works is that people don't often cross platforms. We've found out that If someone reads your blog, they may not be listening to your podcast. Or if they're discovering one of your Facebook lives, they might not know that you have a blog as well. So you can actually take this content and move it around. I've actually done that some with my podcast episodes. It saves time and it means working smarter, not harder. So thanks for joining me today. If you liked what you heard today, please drop by Apple Podcasts and subscribe. And while you're there, leave me a review. And if you like the show, please share an episode with your friends and other people in your network that might be interested in starting a podcast. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy week to listen to me talk about podcasts, and I hope that I'm helping you on your journey. I started this show to help you create a successful podcast that builds your community, grows your business, and increases your influence. And when I work one-on-one with businesses to help them create, craft, launch, and grow their own podcasts, I find that the most crucial step is the launch. And too often, most podcasts just get thrown out into the world without a strategic launch plan. So that's why I'm giving you my podcast launch formula that I use with all of my done-for-you podcast clients. To download this PDF, go to dannyosmond.com slash podcast hyphen launch hyphen formula. That's dannyosmond.com slash podcast hyphen launch hyphen formula. Once you download it, you'll also see a video with me explaining it step by step. So thanks again for joining me today and I'll see you on the next episode.